Hi everyone, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com. Long time no see. I'm happy to be back with you. As promised, today we are going to be sewing my drawstring purse start to finish. I have added a lot of upgrades to this design and will now be referring to the bag that we're making today as the ultimate drawstring purse. I want to give you a look at the finished bag and tell you a little bit about the features that I incorporated before we get started today. So this is the drawstring purse. I have added front and rear pockets to this design in addition to a removable padded adjustable messenger strap so that you have the ability to wear the bag crossbody if you like or you can carry that over the shoulder. I absolutely love these two additions to the bag but I didn't stop there. On the inside of this bag, I incorporated a full length zipper pocket so you could put your valuables in there and feel comfortable not cinching up this drawstring. We have a really wonderful interior zipper pocket and then I have three slip pockets which are shallow and are absolutely perfect for holding the phone or little items. And I added a swivel key fob. So you can see why it truly is the ultimate drawstring bag. You have a couple options for styling this bag. You could just cinch it up and let the drawstrings hang at the side. That's typically what I like to do. And here's what it looks like. It's just absolutely darling. You can also knot these if you need a little bit more uh, peace of mind or security on that. Or you have the option of tying those in a bow. And if you fiddle with that long enough, it looks pretty cute. So shall we get started? Okay, so as mentioned, our exterior has two front pockets and then the drawstring gusset. Our rear exterior panel is going to have the same configuration. So I have pre-crafted this one to save us a little bit of time. For the exterior, I back that with some fusible fleece. Whatever interfacing you choose for this project, make sure that it is uh, fairly lightweight. You don't want anything too rigid because the drawstring won't function properly. So I'm going to set aside this pre-crafted panel and we are going to begin by crafting our exterior pockets, which are made from two pieces of quilt weight cotton, which are nine inches tall by 15 inches across. I used a two inch by 15 inch piece of fusible fleece right along the top front of that pocket, just to give that lip of that pocket a little bit of stability. This is completely optional. So you're going to take your lining for your pocket and your exterior for your pocket and press over those long edges about three quarters of an inch so that you end up with a top and a bottom edge that are pressed over nicely. Then I like to take the front of the pocket and press that in half. So I have a guide for my center stitch line. And then it's my preference to choose a accent fabric for that pocket lining so that it adds a little bit of interest to that pocket. And it makes it easy for the eye to see where the pocket begins on the exterior of that and you can see that a little better here 
with my finished panel. So we are going to stagger the front of that pocket just slightly, like a quarter of an inch over that lining so that it looks like we have a little bit of faux piping there. And then I'm going to run two rows of stitching along the top of that pocket edge. I'm using a 90-14 needle and 3.0 stitch length. And hopefully you can see how that little bit of fusible fleece at the top there offers that pocket ridge a little more stability and gives the stitches something to sink into without creating too much bulk on the exterior. Now I want to bring over my rear panel. Remember I have pre-crafted the front panel and you are going to be making two identical panels for your exterior. Now my Exterior panels are 15 by 15 inch squares of which I have notched two two inch squares out of the bottom right and left hand corners. This is going to net us about a four inch depth on the bag. So again, 15 by 15 and notch out two inch squares. So the exterior pocket is going to get positioned on the exterior panel one inch up from the notch. And you want the base of that pocket nice and even so it's one inch up from the notch which works out to be four and a half inches on mine from the top. Yours might vary a smidgen uh, based upon how you folded over your pocket lips there and um, your fabric, of course, might shrink up a little bit when you iron it. So I'm just going to position this pocket in place. Now for this bag, because we have side seams, you're going to want to do your best to make sure that those pockets are level so that they look nice and even at the sides. So take a minute and compare your two panels once you have the ability to do that and then adjust the pocket on the second panel if needed. So mine look good and I think that's in a large part because I'm measuring up from this bottom corner versus from the top. Okay, so now I wanna run a row of stitching across the bottom here and then I wanna run a row right down that center press line and optional, you can run two more rows on each side of that center press line to finish your pocket nicely. Okay, so I have my pocket attached to the rear exterior panel and I have added the accent stitching down the center. Now the next step is to fashion the gusset that the drawstring is going to thread through. And so that is made from a four by 15 inch cut of quilt weight cotton fabric, no interfacing on that. You're going to want to press over the short edges three quarters of an inch and then bring the bottom and top edges up to meet in the center. And that will give you a gusset that is nicely finished on all four sides. When it's pressed, this measures 13 and a half inches. Yours can vary just slightly, but around that is um, 
an ideal place for you to be. Now what we want to do is put this up on the machine and just run one row of stitching down each short end of this to tack all of those layers down. And I'm just lining the edge of the fabric up with the edge of my foot. Now you're going to position this gusset two inches from the top of that rear exterior panel at center. So you're going to have three quarters of an inch on each side and that's going to be just enough for us to squeak by with our seam allowance. You do not want to capture this gusset in your seam allowance. So make sure that you measure and everything is nice and straight. It's very helpful if you have a large cutting mat so that you can verify this is even and centered. Now the next step is to stitch across the top of that gusset, across the base, then come back in and add one more row of stitching across the top and the base to finish that gusset. Be mindful that you are not stitching the sides because we have to have somewhere to insert the drawstring. Okay, and that's all there is to crafting the exterior of this bag. So you're going to end up with two identical panels. And once you have those, go ahead and position those right sides facing. Begin at the side seam there and align the tops of your pockets nice and tidy and either pin or clip those in place so they don't shift. And then do the same on the opposite side. And then you can look in from the top there and make sure that everything is even and pretty. And if you are satisfied with how those pockets are aligned, then go ahead and stitch down the right hand side. Do not encroach upon that gusset. So you have your stitches there that you can make sure. You should be able to get away with 5 eighths of an inch, but if that's too close, go ahead and go with 3 eighths of an inch. So you're going to stitch down the right and left hand sides and across the base. Do not stitch in the notches or across the top. And then once you've stitched the sides and across the base, just peek inside and make sure that you did not accidentally stitch those gussets. And mine look really good. And then double check at the sides, particularly near the pockets and make sure that you capture all the layers of the pocket in that side seam. And then if you are satisfied with that, go ahead and trim back all the excess to a quarter inch. And then if you have your pockets pinned in place, go ahead and remove those pins. And then you are going to align the side seam with the base seam and using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, stitch right across there to give the bag its depth. Okay. 
and don't worry if it's not perfectly even where you align the side and the basting. That is not a problem at all. What you do want is a nice straight stitch line. So again, we're just aligning that side and basting, flattening that, and then using 5 eighths of an inch to stitch across that material. And then once you're satisfied that you have captured both of those layers, go ahead and trim up to a quarter inch. And then what I like to do is align those corners and make sure they are the exact same width, which is right at the four inches that I desired. So the exterior is now formed. I want to turn that right side out. I really love working with this fusible fleece. It's so soft, but yet it offers just the right amount of body without adding weight to the project. So here's what the bag looks like on the outside. It's absolutely gorgeous. If I didn't mention it before, this fabric is called Blissful Blooms, and it's by Leela Tuller for Riley Blake Designs. And I ordered all three of my prints from this collection from Hawthorne Supply Company. And they're just all gorgeous. This is going to be my go-to summer bag. All right. So now what I want to do with this exterior is turn that top edge over a half an inch. And I begin at those side seams and I'm going to get some clips in that so it can start learning how to lay flat there. You're going to want to make sure that it's nice and even coming across the front there and then across the back. I find once you get those sides clip down, it's much easier to get the front and the back to lay nice and flat. And then I can go ahead and set this aside. And we're going to work on crafting the interior. Alrighty, so the interior panels are also 15 by 15 and have two inch notches out of the bottom right and left hand corners. I'm using a quote weight cotton, no interfacing. If you prefer to interface, go with something super light like the Pellon 808 or 809. I think if you selected the fusible fleece for the exterior and you have a good quality quilt weight cotton for the interior, you are a-okay without adding that additional interfacing. So inside of this ultimate drawstring purse, I am incorporating a full length zipper pocket, which I think would be uh, wonderful for keeping the wallet, um, anything valuable that you'd like that extra layer of security. And therefore we are going to be creating a nice wide zipper pocket. And I have this pinned together so I could give you an idea of what it looks like. This is an 18 inch YKK double purse zip, which I received from Jenny at Zip It Zipper Supply on Etsy. You can save 10% off your order with her if you use the code SOSPIRE10. 
I want to thank Jenny for sending me the zipper for this project and I highly recommend her shop. So the actual pocket piano is 15 by 18. You're going to take the 15 inch edges and press those over three quarters of an inch and then fold that pocket in half nice and even and align those top edges. Then you're going to have a four inch by 15 inch piece of material which you will press in half long ways open up and bring the outer edges inward to meet on the center press line. Press that over to create a little trim piece for the top of the zipper. So the goal is to center that zipper in between the pocket layers and that top trim piece. I really like the double pull zippers because you can close the pocket and have the pulls end up in the center of the pocket. So I like to butt the fabric right up against the zipper teeth. And these nylon coils are easy to sew through. If you only have zippers with metal coils, you are going to want to create fabric tabs at the end so that you are not sewing through your zipper teeth. But I am confident I can sew right through these zipper teeth. So I'm going to end up capturing the ends of the zipper in my seam allowance and I will not have to worry about zipping my heads off the ends. And so now I'm going to sandwich the top of that zipper tape in between that little top panel that I pressed over and again butting that fabric right up against those zipper teeth without overlapping them. And you want to make sure that that top panel is aligned with the pocket panel so everything can be captured in that side seam. All right, once you get everything in place, go ahead and test the zipper and make sure that it can get past the fabric and this is very nice. And then I'll show you what that looks like on the back side. So I have a finely finished, fully lined pocket. Now I want to run a row of stitching across the bottom and a row of stitching across the top. And then I'm going to add a second row of stitching across the bottom. My second row of stitching on the top will come when I attach it to the actual pocket. It may be easiest for you to switch out to a zipper foot at this point. I am going to. Okay, so I have the bottom of my zipper secured with two rows of stitching and then one row currently across the top. I'm going to give this all a good press so I can make sure that the fabric is lying nice and flat. Okay, so I have two rows of stitching across the bottom, one row across the top. I just want to verify that the zipper functions nice and it definitely does. And so there we have a beautiful pocket, which in case you are curious, is a little over nine inches tall by 15 inches wide. So now what we are going to want to do is position this pocket on top of 
one of those interior panels and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bump the pocket up one inch from the base. Alrighty, then I am going to stitch across the base of this pocket and across the top of this pocket to secure it to the interior panel. And now I have a full length zipper pocket all in place on one of those interior panels. Now I'm gonna bring over the second interior panel and for this, I want to create a bank of slip pockets. I'm going to have three of those that are a little more shallow, would be perfect for smaller items like the phone, lip gloss, lotion, things like that, that I wouldn't want to have lost in a bigger pocket. And this was fashioned from a three by eight piece of material, which I folded like I do all of my straps and then installed a little rivet there to keep the fob from uh, floating up and down on that. Your strap should be sized to fit your hardware. This is a uh, three quarter inch swivel fob there. So the three inch cut works well for that. And then my pocket is 12 and a half by 15. I'm going to use the same process and fold the 15 inch top and bottom edges over a long ways and then fold that pocket in half. And I'm just going to slightly stagger that fabric to give it a nice little lip there. And I want to tuck the raw edges of this fob in between those pocket layers. Pin that in place and then I pressed the pocket in thirds so that I have stitch guides to divide that. Then you're going to need to run two rows of stitching across the top of that pocket to finish it. And then I'm going to give this pocket a good press right along the top edge. Alright, and I want to bring back over my remaining interior panel and this time I'm going to position the shallow pocket four inches from the top of this remaining panel. I'll make sure everything is nice and straight and get that pinned or clipped in place. Then I'm going to stitch across the bottom to attach that and then run two rows of vertical stitching to divide. All right, and now I have a nice three-way shallow slip pocket installed. So I'm going to bring over my panel with the zipper pocket on that. And I'm going to position that right sides facing with the slip pocket. And I don't have to worry about aligning the pockets. I'm just going to be concerned with aligning the sides and the base. And then using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to stitch down the right and the left hand sides and across the base. I am not stitching the notches yet and I am not stitching the top. Okay, and I had absolutely no problem stitching through this YKK zipper whatsoever. It just went right through those coils. I'm going to remove all the pins from the inside that were holding my pockets in place and I will not be trimming up these zippers. Um, they should just lay nice and tidy on the inside there. I am going to reach inside and align that side seam and that base seam 
and then using 5 eighths of an inch, I'm going to stitch across there nice and straight to give this interior the same 4 inch depth that I achieved on the exterior. All right, and then I just want to pair up those sides there. Make sure that the depth is the same on both. I am not trimming away the excess on this because there's no interfacing, and I want to leave um, myself plenty of room there for when I wash this bag and that fabric starts to um, shrink up and unravel. So I'm going to take that top edge and I'm going to fold that over about a half an inch, three quarters of an inch there. And without the interfacing, the cotton fabric presses pretty nice with just your finger. So do that. And then you can fit that interior inside of the exterior there. And I like to begin by aligning those side seams first and then everything else comes together pretty nice from that point. If you just tug on that fabric just a bit and your interior should fit snugly inside of that exterior if your seam allowances were consistent. So what I find is if you put your hands in there and smooth everything out, that lining grabs that fleece and everything should fit inside there really nice. So this is like a great bucket style bag right now. So we are uh, technically done with the interior and the exterior. What we need to do now is craft the drawstring poles and the adjustable shoulder strap. I'm really happy with how this bag looks. It's just absolutely beautiful. Okay, so for this bag, you're gonna have two drawstrings. Both of those are full cuts of fabric. So by full cuts, I mean the 44 inches and they are three inches wide. So you'll cut two three inch by 44 inch strips of material. You're going to press the short edges of those drawstrings in about a half an inch. And then you're going to press the entire length of the fabric in half bring those outer edges inward to meet on the center press line and then fold that over again and press so that you have a nicely finished drawstring. You'll have two of those in total. So you're gonna wanna stitch down that open edge to finish the drawstring. And that's all there is to crafting the drawstring. So we won't need those quite yet. We're going to go ahead and craft the removable padded messenger strap now. The strap is also a full 44 inch cut of the quilt weight cotton and it is six inches wide. And then in that center channel, I have fused a three inch wide piece of the fleece, which offers me a really nice stable padded comfy strap. You'll use the same process, press this material in half long ways, open that up, bring the outer edges inward to meet on that center press line, and then fold that over and press again. Then I open that all up, insert the fusible fleece, and press everything back in place. For the strap, I'm going to run a row of stitching down the open edge, the opposite edge, and then down the center so that I have three rows of stitching down the strap. All right, and now I have a gorgeous padded strap with 
three beautiful rows of stitching. I just want to trim off that selvage at the ends here. And then I am going to take a tri-glide and I am going to thread the ends of the strap around that center bar. This is worth noting, I did not extend that fusible fleece to the end of this strap for this reason, so that it would be nice and easy to thread that hardware on there. So now I'm gonna fold over the end of that strap and then bring that folded edge up and run two rows of stitching to secure that tri-glide to one end of the strap. Again, that triglide is just attached around the bar to the strap. Okay, then we are going to be attaching two swivel fobs, and these are one and a half inches there across the base, and that's the same width as the strap. Before I attach these to the strap, I just want to make sure that they are not defective and they function well, and these do. And I'm going to uh, thread on the first triglide there to the center of the strap. And then I am going to take the remaining raw edge and bring that up and over that center bar like you are threading a buckle. And this will allow that triglide to slide down the strap. So one of these swivel fobs is on one end and I have this remaining raw edge here which I am going to thread the second swivel fob on and so I will just do the same thing. There's no batting or fusible fleece at the end of this so I can fold that over and over and then I'm going to run two rows of stitching across there to create an adjustable removable strap. you create an adjustable removable strap. I like these straps because they allow you to wear your bag crossbody or over the shoulder with ease and the hardware adds a really nice professional look to the bag. So the strap is complete and the drawstrings are complete. Now we need to craft some little tabs that we can install on the side of the bag so we can hook the strap to it after we sew the top on that bag. So these are um, five by seven and a half inch strips of material which I folded just like I do all of the straps. I did put a little bit of the fusible fleece in there to add some body to this and I ran two rows of stitching down each side and then I have some uh, one inch o-rings here and the one inch is the distance in the circle there in the center of the circle and so I'm going to thread those on there and then I went ahead and added a rivet to that to keep the ring from moving up and down on this. Uh, it's really not a big deal if it does move up and down on it. If you prefer, you could just run a row of stitching across there or leave it as is. I need mine to match, so I'm going to go ahead and install that second rivet. And I have a cam 
press here that I used to do that if you're not familiar. And so the first thing I need to do is punch the hole in this. And I would like those to be even. So I'm going to get an idea of where I need to put that by comparing the two. And I have my hole punch installed on the press. And that just puts a hole right through all of those layers. And then I have a little container of rivets here. And now I need to switch out to the rivet dies and that will press this rivet together and lock it in place and it's just that easy. And that's all there is to it and now I have another little extra piece of hardware on this bag. All right. So now I want to bring back over my bag and I am going to tuck these little tabs with the O-rings in between on the sides. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and switch out to the pins so I can make sure that these don't shift. And then I want to make sure that both of those tabs are the same height. And then I'm ready to put this bag up on the machine deck and stitch all the way around that top perimeter of this bag to secure the exterior to the interior. And I am going to reinforce these tabs with a second row of stitching since that's going to become a stress point for the bag. So I'm going to remove the machine deck here so I can have a better access to this. And I'm gonna go ahead and stitch slowly around the top perimeter of the bag. I have the fabric aligned with the right hand edge of the foot. Everything stayed aligned beautifully. This fabric is so gorgeous. I am super excited to have a pretty new bag to carry with me this summer. This bag is a lot of fun to use and you will see why when we thread the drawstrings, which is the last thing we have to do before we can load it up. Just taking one more look and making sure everything is good and it just turned out so perfect. Okay, so to thread the drawstrings, you are going to need a large safety pin. And I begin at one end with one drawstring and just feed that through the front channel which we attach to the exterior and there's just enough room with those four rows of top stitching to get this through there. And so you should be able to get the safety pin out. Pull that so you have about 12 inches of tail hanging out the end there, and then start in on the opposite side. If it pulls out any little threads, go ahead and trim those. There may be one or two. 
and try and keep your drawstring from twisting. And then you're gonna come around that in the opposite side because you want both ends of the drawstring to end up on the same side. And then just gently pull that through. And again, you may get some of those little frays from that gusset which had raw edges and it's no big deal. Just trim them as they come out and then gently pull on that drawstring. And so you're going to end up with about an eight inch tail on that drawstring. And now we want to take the second drawstring. So on the left hand side of the bag, I have my two tails. Now we want to take the second drawstring and start on the other end that has no tails. And this gets a little more challenging because now you already have that other drawstring inside of that gusset. So just work slow. Once you get it started, you should be okay. This is one of the main reasons why you don't use heavy interfacing and you definitely don't want to interface that drawstring gusset because you need that nice and light so that you still have the leeway to get this drawstring through there. And so as the safety pin becomes visible, just gently pull that drawstring through. And again, you want to leave about 12 inch tail and you're gonna turn the bag over. So now you have three ends out one side. The end with the safety pin, you're gonna keep on going and you're just gonna put that in the top of that gusset on the opposite side. And it's only just that first part that's a little bit challenging as you get that drawstring in there and you can kind of pull the gusset over that to help it out a bit. And the bigger your safety pin is, the easier this is. And then we're coming out that opposite end there. And so now just pull very gently so you can make the ends of the drawstring even. And you should have, again, about eight inches on this side. So you end up with two drawstrings on each side and then when you pull on those, they close up the bag and pop out the pockets and give this bag such an awesome look. Now you have the option of knotting these at the ends if you like or you can leave them loose so you can tie them in just knots like this. You could fashion them in little bows. You could maybe even get big beads and put them on the ends. You have a lot of options. And the more you open and close this bag, the um, easier that will get. Right now, everything's nice and stiff because that fusible fleece on there, but it will wear in. It's like a pair of shoes. So the last thing that we have to do is attach our strap here. And that just clips right on to that O-ring. And it's such a beautiful bag. I'm so, so, so happy with it. I just want to give you some measurements before I say goodbye to you. Okay, across the base, we're coming in at 10 inches. Height-wise, 12 inches. And the depth, you know, is four inches. And then the handle, of course, is adjustable, so it can be worn crossbody or over the shoulder. 
Thank you all so much for sewing with me today. I absolutely love this bag. It's gorgeous. It has all my favorite colors in it and it's gonna be the perfect bag for me to get through the summer with. Before I say goodbye to you today, I just wanted to give you a couple dates about what's coming um, up for us at SoSpire. First off, if you're a SoSpire patron, we have our spring gift exchange on Thursday at 7 p.m. Make sure you check the Patreon page for the link to the Zoom room. If you are not a SoSpire patron, consider becoming a SoSpire patron. We do a lot of fun community events throughout the year. It's a small, intimate group of makers who get together, share and exchange ideas, and we have a lot of fun and have built a lot of friendships as a result of that. Okay, so on Tuesday, May the 3rd, 7 p.m., everybody who is interested is welcome to join our Plan to Be Creative meeting. That is hosted in the SoSpire Zoom room. You can find the link to that on the main SoSpire calendar. Everything you need to know will be down in the show notes for you. Basically, we set three goals for the month ahead. So you'd pick three creative goals for the month of May. And then we follow up on our April goals and we keep each other inspired and motivated to keep creating and pushing ourselves to the next level. So again, anybody who's interested in setting creative goals is welcome to join us for that. And then next Friday, May the 6th, we're going to start our market tote. And many of you have made and love the market tote. We're going to, again, upgrade that design as I have with the drawstring purse here. And we're going to make it just a little extra. And I'm thinking we're going to go bigger with that bag, but I reserve the right to change my mind. And then on May the 10th at 1230, I'll be live in the Facebook group. I'm not sure yet what I will be doing for that one hour live. Uh, we may be just be visiting. It's been a long time since we've done that. And then our next event after that is May 19th. We're going to have a Patreon Selfish Sew Together. And there will be a community poll for the SoSpire patrons so you can vote on that project. Um, last month for April, or this month for April, we actually made a two-way divided caddy that was darling. I shared a picture of that on Instagram. So um, that's a fun opportunity if you like to sew live with other makers all over the country, even sometimes the world. That's a great opportunity for you to do that, but you'll need to be a SoSpire patron. You can get in right now at $3 a month. It's a, it's a really great deal. I always try to give you guys more than you expect. So consider that. Um, and I think that is it for SoSpire for the month of May. I might be able to sneak in a bag maker workshop, but no guarantees on that because that's already a pretty full lineup with the weekly tutorials. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to the end here through the community announcements. As always, please know until we meet again, the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Thank you so much.